So we're gonna work with wild pumpkins today. The way you get one is you go into the forest and take a medium length cardboard tube and you just wanna give it a little. <laughs> I'll just uh, give this a minute and oh, here comes one. Come on, come on buddy. Let's see if we can get him to jump right in my hand. Come on little guy. There we go. Look at this little ragamuffin. Oh. Ah. You suck at cooking, yeah, you totally suck. So we're gonna get the pie crust ready here. You wanna take four or five slices of whole grain bread, cut off the crust, and then gently press those into a pie shell. Just keep spinning and pressing until you get a nice smooth texture, and then brush off the extra crusticles, and there's your shell. So we're gonna take our wild pumpkin and cut the top off and slide that can out. Give it a good rinse to get the guts off it and get that pumpkin into a bowl. We're gonna throw in two bagged eggs, three quarters a cup of white sugar. This will help the pie to taste just a touch sweeter. Half a teaspoon of salt and the spices. <sighs> this part's uh, a little bit sad for me. When I got the recipe from my mom, she said, it takes one teaspoon of cinnamon, one teaspoon of ground ginger, and a quarter teaspoon of cloves. Or, and I quote, I use two and a quarter teaspoons of pumpkin pie spice. <sighs> Just out here trying to come to terms with the fact that I've been eating the pumpkin pie of shortcuts my whole life. Here I thought my mom wasn't afraid to get her elbows greasy and uh, <sighs> now I know she just likes to take the easy way out. And the sad thing about it is that if you combine these spices, which is super easy, and then compare it to the pumpkin pie spice. So we're gonna use two and a quarter teaspoons of pumpkin pie spice. And we just wanna wang jangle this together really good. And once you've got that mixed, pouring it into another bowl is totally unnecessary. In my family, we usually add the cream directly from the udder of a cow, but since I can't fit a cow in my kitchen, I've got this condiment squeezer, and I'm just gonna squeeze the udder while I slowly mix in the cream until that's way soupier than you would ever expect. You're gonna be like, no way is this a pie filling, but guess what, you're wrong, it's a pie filling. Once that's nice and smooth, you're just gonna pour that in the pie shell and make sure you don't go too far to the top because this is basically a bowl of water. Undo is on 420 Fundo. We're gonna cook that for 15 minutes at this hot temperature so that way we can get maximum crispy crustitude. And then after 15 minutes, we're gonna lower that to 350. And you'll bake that between 30 and 45 minutes. The way you're gonna test this is by checking for the wobble. You want to just give it a hit, and if there's still a significant wobble, that pie's not cooked all the way through. You want some turgidity in the resistance of the wobbliness and jiggliness of the pumpkin pie filling. That's how you know it's done. And then once it's done, you want to leave that to sit for at least an hour, if not longer. And then all you have to do is decide how you want to whip cream it. You can do the mohawk, the fluffy bed cloud, the stupid. Feel free to do the rim job. You can go with the nihilist, the volcano or the anarchist. Pumpkin, pumpkin, pumpkin pie. Get it in the season when everything dies. Shove it in your face and try not to cry when you eat that pumpkin, pumpkin pie. My heart is sunk and shoulders slumping cause I can't get enough pumpkin pie.